Hey everyone, in this video we're going to learn about SDK man. So the reason why we'd use SDK man is if we have multiple versions of Java that we need on our machine. So we might need that if we're running multiple applications. Maybe we're in a, a software development team and we have some older monolithic applications that run Java 8, maybe Java 11, and then we have some newer newly built applications that run Java 17 or Java 21 and we need to have an SDK for all of these different versions and we need to manage them so we need to go and actually download the SDK we need to go and point our Java home to whatever version we need to compile and run our Java application so that's the problem that we have to keep switching and managing all these Java versions. Um, similar with Maven, but not so much so you can kind of get away with using a standard version of Maven and and not really run into problems. But and the first thing we do to install SDK man is just to run this command here. And you can see that it's already installed for me. So I don't have to actually install it, but for you it'll take a couple of minutes. Then you need to go and activate SDK man. So run this script here. And once you've done that, you can check to see have you got SDK man installed. So SDK, and we'll type in version. And we can see that we do. So that's brilliant. Now the next thing we want to do that we have SDK man installed is we need to go and install a Java version. So let's see what Java versions SDK man provides. So if we do SDK list Java, like this, we can see all the different vendors that it supports. So we have um, JetBrains, we have Microsoft, Oracle, and many more. I just tend to use this first one here, and um, this is the Open JDK, and it goes from version 23 to 8. So most of the applications I use are either 17 or 21, especially for my local development. Works a little bit different. We have some older applications, but for my personal development, it's usually 17 or 21. And you can see I have these installed already. But if I was to copy this here, copy this identifier, to get out of this page, just hit Q, and we're going to install it. So SDK install Java and the version you can see this is already installed and what you're going to do is you're going to install whatever one you want and actually install a second one as well so I'm going to install or I'm going to show you how to install version 21 as well so we'll take that as 21 and 04 um, so it's saying here that that's not available. So I must just be misremembering the the version. So it's 2104 and hit Q. So what did I have? I had 210. Oh, maybe it was 04. Yeah, it just it's just four. Okay, so that's what was causing the issue. And you can see I already have it installed. So you go and install those two, because those are kind of the main ones anyway. So then we do a Java version, and we're using version 21. So if we wanted to change that, let's say we wanted to change that from using version 21 to using version 17, we would say SDK use, and then say Java 17, and now you can see it says that it's using Java 17 and we can confirm this if we do Java version like this we can see that it's using 17 now one thing that we probably want to do is we probably want to set a default value so for our SDK we probably want Java 21 or I do at least anyway on mine so I'm gonna just select Java 21 and I'm going to put it in here so what a default one uh, what that actually means is anytime you 
open up your laptop or you open up a new terminal, it will be using Java 21. So it's a SDK default Java 21. And now Java is set as the D, uh, Java 21 is set as the default uh, Java version to use across all our terminals. So if I do a Java version again, you can see that this terminal is still using 17 because that's because we set it to 17. But if we were to, you know, shut off this machine, reboot it, and open up this terminal, it would be version 21. And we could see that if we were to open a new tab. So if we were to say shell new tab, I'm going to go here and do Java version. You can see we're using version 21. Now Maven is also the same. So if we do SDK Maven and then do list, I only have one of them installed on this, so it's that's the opposite way around, I think. List Maven rather than Maven list. Yep, it is. So if I was to pick this one, 3.9.0, hit Q to just quit that. And now I want to install it. So I'll do SDK install Maven and then the number. So now you can see it's already installed for you. It'll take a minute or two. And that's pretty much it. And it, this is a really easy way to switch between different Java versions. And there's no kind of complexity in it either. Um, there's no, oh, you know, I've pointed my home to the Java 19 or Java 17 version, let's say, and now you're trying to do a Maven clean install on a Java application and it's saying like, oh, Java 17 isn't compatible, you need Java 11 or something like that. And you're like, well, you know, it's it's looking at it. what have I done wrong? Is there a step I, I forgot to do? This is kind of much easier and straightforward. The only caveat that I would say, and I haven't really ran into this issue um, apart from one small instance is when I needed a very specific version. I needed an Oracle version of Java where I was having an issue with it, um, but it didn't. It didn't have the Java version SDK man didn't have it listed, so I couldn't actually use that uh, that version. So let me show you what I'm talking about. So if I do SDK um, list Java, so if I wanted to use Java 8, I would just do. Uh, I would just do an install for this one here, which would be this. I just copy and paste this in. Um, but this is Open JDK, I believe. And I needed the Oracle uh, instance of it here. Uh, it wasn't, it didn't actually end up being a problem in the end, but for testing, they wanted to use, um, they wanted to use the, the version, version eight of Oracle. But as you can see on this, it has 23, 22, 21, 17, and back when I was trying it, it had, it did have 11, but it didn't have eight, and that's what, and that's what we we wanted for testing. So that's the only time I've ever kind of been like, right, uh, I need to go and manually download a, a JDK and and switch it to that. But like that's a, I think that's a very rare exception. I don't think many people are going to run into that. But I think this is a this is a, a beautiful tool, and it leaves life so much easier for a developer when they're working on multiple different Java applications that have various different versions. So I hope you enjoyed the video and you learned something from it.